Hi. That was uh, a hymn prelude based on the tune Nun Dankend Bringend und Er. And some of you might know that as the tune that goes with the hymn Come, let us join our cheerful songs or let children hear the mighty deeds. And I was playing it because I'm going to play it in church tomorrow and it's a book that Joanne gave me. And this is Joanne Post right here on the cover. And so I'm playing it in church tomorrow morning, which for you was earlier today. Happy 50th anniversary, Joanne and Charles. Uh, my name is John David, or J.D. Struckman. I am one of Joanne and Charles's top ten favorite nephews. And uh, I can't be there for the celebration, but I thought I'd make a little video and share some things with you. It was at an event like the one you're at now that I attended for my grandparents when I was about Cal's age and my cousin Brad and I were in charge of the bar, which is strange. Don't ask why. It was the 70s. And uh, I remember just having great pride in that they were being married 50 years, but all I really cared was keeping track of the bottle caps of whether more people drinking Bud or Bush um, at that event. It was after that trip, or one similar to it, when we had been visiting my grandparents in St. Charles, that we were up in Chicago to visit Joanne and Charles, and I remember waking up one morning and being so eager and excited we were going downtown. We were going to go see some great strange sights in this big wonderful city. So we all climbed into uh, my parents' uh, VW microvan, a uh, red one, a hippie bus, I came later to find out, and we're headed downtown and Uncle Charles turns to me and says, you know, we're going to go through a building. The highway goes right through a building. It's the post office. I was like so excited. And we got in there and suddenly there's this big awful noise. But I thought it was cool because like we're inside the post office driving in the car on the highway. But the motor blew on the VW bus and we pulled off to the side and Somehow we got back to Joanne and Charles's, and they took care of us. They supported us when we needed it. Uh, and I don't know everything that went on, because I was just, you know, a little kid. But I just remember that everything was going to be all right, because we were with Joanne and Charles. And if your car's going to break down, there's no better place to have it break down <clears throat> than inside a building in Chicago. It's that hospitality that then later manifested itself in the time that I was at Valpo. The generosity, the caring, some of you know this, that uh, Joanne and Charles are my godparents. And I know that they pray for all their nieces and nephews, but they were my sponsors. And they stood up and said, we're going to make sure this one's all right. And they've prayed for me over the years, and I appreciate that. When I was in Valpo, because they lived so close to O'Hare, it was like, like, 912 Wilson Avenue, something like that. I can find that place in my sleep. And in fact, I think I did sometimes. Whenever I had an opportunity to, to take someone to the airport or pick someone up from the airport, I'd always stop in and just unannounced stop by for dinner or a piece of pie or whatever. And it was at that dinner table that I learned lots about teaching, practical things from teaching from Joanne. Uh, not the crazy stuff you learn in classrooms, which you really learn from a veteran teacher. It was also there that I really appreciated a good role model and what a good mentor it was to have Joanne as a teacher. But let me get back to Charles for a moment. Back when I was younger, uh, they gave me a telescope and he took me out in the backyard and opened up to me this whole universe. And because I was into astronomy and he helped me get in bigger. And that was so cool. And years later, when we when we went to visit, and I show up with my family, Andrew, who's now going to be a senior in high school, is in third grade, and he got to go to Uncle Charles's lab. And was so excited about that, and Uncle Charles gave him a cop his own copy, his first copy, periodic table of the elements. It is true that Andrew slept with it under his pillow that night, and he just got a four on his AP chemistry. 
exam. It's that passion for learning that Joanne and Charles have always had and, and just rubbed off on others. Always wanting to learn more about the world and do what they do better. And the whole idea of professional development was really burned into me there, spending time with them. Always trying to get better at your job, always learning more. And I think it's really safe to say that while they've touched all of you who are there, through me, they've touched thousands of families. And that's really special. The whole desire for learning, Joanne, i got to tell you, we just read a great book this past year with our faculty at Epiphany Lutheran School. And uh, it's called Mind in the Making. And I would recommend it to you. It's by Ellen Galinsky. It's fabulous. And uh, Holly and Peter really ought to read it too. But, you know. Anyway. They were always supportive of my music. Um, Joanne gave me lots of the music that she had when she was a student. And I've tried to make as best use of it as I could. And they showed up for concerts when my parents couldn't attend them at Valpo. And that always meant a lot. Their generosity, watching them share with others, watching them take care of others, was really important to me over the years. On a lighter note, I want to thank them for <clears throat> making me a Macintosh guy long before it was cool to be an Apple guy. Uh, through their encouragement, I've had Apple products only as my computers. Just bought myself a new laptop so that I can do bigger and better things. In fact, I'll edit this video on it tonight so that you can see it tomorrow. But among other things, I also saw in Joanne and Charles not only their great passion for their careers and supporting and loving the people around them, but being strong members of a congregation, teaching Sunday school, being on boards and committees, doing what it takes to make a church, a congregation successful. That was important. Growing up at a parish, you know, you just see dad who works at church and mom who puts up with it. But with Joanne and Charles, you saw the other side of how it doesn't work without people like that. And that's really important. But also through them, I saw it was important to have a passion for something other than the career. Clearly, Charles in photography, Joanne and her knitting and, and her baking. And I want to thank her for the patience that she had whenever I would visit, whenever I wanted pies for breakfast. Because you can get cereal anywhere, man. But you cannot eat Joanne's pies enough. And when you think about it, what's the difference between a, like a raspberry pie and like a fruit tart? It's the same thing. Anyway, they've made me the man I am today with lots of other people, and I want to thank them for that. And watching them in their relationship, if I can be as patient and supportive as Charles, maybe Cindy will keep me around for another 26 years. Anyway, God bless you. God bless all your family. Hope to see you soon. I gotta get back to practicing because I'm an awful organist. Have a good night.